Okay, guys, GT40 race project number seven. As far as our liquid looks on the chamber, pretty much the same as we've had. Let's pull those valves out and take a look. About what we've had, have been seeing, more or less. Pretty good. Don't really see much on the right side of that god boss. Very similar to what we've been seeing. Very much like an LS3. Even though it, at, 60, at 0.65 lift, we got plenty of swirl, it doesn't seem to be doing that much with this fuel. I, I do have textures everywhere, but the, the valves themselves are not textured. Probably would lose some CFM if we did that, but it's something to think about. We're also not using a back cut because it's a high RPM uh, setup. You can see on the valve, you can see the seat where the seat lies. We're good. Uh, you should, you guys should be able to see the seat there. You may not be able to see all of the 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 angles. There's actually five angles there. The exhaust actually has the exhaust heat crossover. This exhaust worked bizarrely well. I mean, really, really bad. You can see it's a relatively thin uh, valve seat, but uh, pretty much all of them are. I'm not going with a thick uh, valve seat on these. All right, it may not look like it, but that's about what we have. I try for around 40,000, so we got about 42,000 for a, a valve seat. Okay, last one we looked at was number eight. These are number eight. This is number seven, the one we're on now. How close are we? Well, we're a little shy, little shy, little shy. Gaining on number eight, gaining on number eight, gaining on number eight little better on number eight finishes out right about where the other ones were finishing around 261 okay how about our curbs they're both very similar okay 26 at 600 24 97 very similar curves as far as our swirl now let's take a look what it looked like through the manifold the wilson spacer and the 770 carb Okay, number eight, these intake flows, which were our lowest, versus what we got for the intake flows through the Wilson, the Cobra, and the 770. Now, this is number seven. Number seven didn't flow that great. It only flowed 281 in our last, uh, last bunch of flows through this. How did we do? Well, if we compare side to side, very similar, very similar. All right, losing a little bit, losing, gaining, gaining a lot. Our highest flowing, it's our highest flowing port at this point. A 250 through the manifold, through the car. Uh, that's no joke. That's actually really, 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 really good. It is... You know, if we look here, right, number seven, it's, it's got the big plenum. It's a lower runner. So that huge plenum helps feed it. Now, why didn't the number six do as well? Well, you would think it would. It actually flowed better than this one. Don't know. I mean, yeah, the... The intake port itself was a little shy, right, versus this one. That's a little better. Okay, well, that's got to be our difference. Sorry, guys, I'm thinking out loud. I'm trying to learn from this project. Okay, so this is number eight. We're going to look at these air speeds in reference to these air speeds. Very close, a little faster. A little faster, a little slower. 
As far as the roof, the roof works a little better on this one than this one, okay? It also flows better. Now we got 403, 401, 371, relatively even, probably one of the more even short sides we've had. And uh, that may be that may be part of the reason that it flows so well after you put the intake on it. Something to think about. All right, for our exhaust flows, we're going to go back to number two because it has an exhaust crossover. So we can we can take a look at both exhaust crossover ports. Now I did have a technical issue. That's why there's a bunch of scribble here. I I goofed off. I goofed up something over here, and uh, I missed I missed a lift, and it was just a mess. So I had to redo redo it from 300 out. But um, we're pretty close side to side here. 122, 121. Now here we got a, a separation, really bad separation. And it sounded like it wasn't flowing good at all, but in reality, when you look at what the other port was flowing with no noise, we got an extra almost, you know, 15 CFM. Better, better. Now from here, we go down to here. 194.5, 180 here. Huge difference. 0 0.6, 197, 211 and change. With a pipe, 211.4, 226. Bizarre, right? I know. 700, 205.5, 215, 240 through the pipe. 0.75, 216, 210. It doesn't look that much different, really, but it's a very good flowing port. Do I know why? I really don't. I really don't. Could it be the shape of the exhaust valve there? As close as I can possibly get them. Are they the, the valve angles? They're almost identical. Valve depths are almost identical. Could it be something with the casting? Yeah, no doubt, because the casting is all over the place. In any case, what we got on 7, if we go to, let's say, uh, 650 lift, you got over 245 through the intake manifold and 226 on the exhaust. Very high exhaust ratio, right? But then again, high exhaust ratio doesn't hurt on high RPM stuff, right? So overall, I'm going to take it as a win. And I think I'm going to call it quits for today. I'm, I'm knockered. Knack, knack, knackered. My New Zealand guy says knackered. All right. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night.